Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Chan. I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 257 of The Funnel. Do your reps say my inbound leads suck? Now, I'm pretty sure I've done inbound lead podcasts before. I've talked about how they work and why you need to follow up and all that good stuff. But this is more about maybe how your reps are reacting and the processes they're going through as part of their outreach to maybe give you some hints on how to resolve that. Before we begin, I want to remind you to head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. If you subscribe, everyone, every new subscriber is entitled to a free 30-minute coaching call. Just select the link and schedule your time. Today's agenda, maybe, maybe not, follow up. Think differently and close. Maybe, maybe not. These are the good leads. These are the Glen Gary leads. Okay. Most of us have seen that cult sales movie. Why are all sales movies negative about salespeople? We write a positive one where everybody wins. Maybe no one will go see that movie. But maybe, maybe not. So I want to talk a little bit about agencies and the yellow brick road, right? If you remember the Wizard of Oz, all they had to do was follow the yellow brick road and get to Oz, and Oz would get them home. Well, Oz turned out to be this little man behind the yellow, behind the curtain, right? He didn't really understand how he got there or how he's going to get home. And to some degree, agencies do that. Now, I don't want to pick on them and say that they're doing this on purpose and they're selling you a bill of goods because I don't think they are. But they're putting it out there as if you go down this road of inbound and you build your inbound base, okay, and you attract warm leads to come into your website, that you'll have this bounty of business coming your way. And they truly believe that. HubSpot built an entire business on that and and went public a couple of years ago. So there's definitely uh, something to be said for building your inbound business. I mean, they get thousands of leads a day they have to call through. So they're constantly selling off of those leads. And pretty much that's how, all, that's how they sell all of their business. But for the rest of us, it's not possible. We have to sell outbound, right? So that's true. A, B, most of us are handing leads off. Most people are handing leads off to sales reps that, that maybe they don't know how to deal with, right? They don't know what to do with those inbound leads. So it may not be that the lead's bad. It just may be how we're connecting to the leads or what our expectations are on those leads. Okay? The leads are different. Why are they different? Because there's a lot you don't know in addition to what you do know. You do know that they downloaded this white paper, or they downloaded this ebook, or they've done all these things on your website. Those are the things you know. You know the person's name, their contact information because they've put it into the system. And maybe it's time for the sales rep to reach out. But you really don't know the inside of their company. You don't know who makes decisions and when they make decisions. Is this a decision maker? Do they have budget? Do they have do- There's things you just don't know. Okay? Now, you could say that about any prospect. Yeah, to some degree you could. But this is even a little deeper. Because in most cases when you're reaching out to prospects, you're trying to reach out to the person who you think makes the decisions. You're, you've done some homework on that. You've... You've warmed it up. You've had some interaction. With this, you haven't. You don't know where they are in the buying cycle. And you don't know with prospects. But you don't, I'm talking about specifically with inbound leads. You don't know. How much have they been nurtured? Okay. Or do they need to be nurtured some more? Right. You you try to make a connection and they don't get back to you. And maybe your rep's follow-up isn't as good. Okay. What I'm saying is that maybe they're good. Maybe not, but you don't know enough based on your sales reps follow up. So first of all, find out if they're being consistent with their follow up and they're following up multiple times and they're doing it the right way. Not just once and saying the lead sucks. Okay. Are they nurturing that lead? Okay. Because if they're not, it's, it's a problem. So let's talk about what that, about that follow up. Okay. Here's your typical scenario. Sales rep gets a lead, right? They either call 
or they email and they don't hear anything back and it can go days without a response. Maybe they follow up, maybe they don't. Maybe that's it. One time, lead sucks. I emailed them. They didn't respond back to me. Lead sucks. What does that mean? Did they do the right thing? Okay, an inbound lead is five to six times over a two to three week period. And if you have their phone number, you should call them first and then you should email them and do that over two to three weeks. It should be contextual, right? It's about whatever it is they downloaded, personal about them, right? And in some cases, if they know the contact level, who it is they're contacting and make it more contextual about them or personal, and how fast are they doing that? If you're waiting to follow up, you're dead in the water. The longer it goes, the, the less likely you are to get a response. So if you go two days on an inbound lead, forget about it. Every single day it goes more and more down the drain. And that's data. That's solid data. It drops more and more every day. So you need a process and a program for timely follow-up quickly for the first one and then lay out the time frame and the cadence for the next four or five. Okay. And use both methods, voicemail and email. Why do I say that? Why do I say pick up the phone and email? Because some people like to be contacted in email. Some people like to be contacted via phone and you just don't know. Okay. You just don't know. So that's the first thing I would check. I wouldn't take their word verbatim. I'd go back and I'd look at, okay, let me see the leads. Let me see when and how you followed up, what it looked like. And I want to see, I don't, even, I don't just want the dates. I want the emails and I want to know what you said on the voicemail. You can type it out or write it down. I don't care. Let's take a look at it. Let's take the last X number of leads. I don't, whatever, let's say you get 20 leads a day. That's a lot of leads and they're all bad. So give me the last three days. If you get one lead a month, Eh, you're probably going to have to go back a few months and look at those leads and then make adjustments there. Because if they're not following up right away and they're not following up over two to week three, two to three week period over multiple times, they're not doing it right. I'm going to tell you to think differently. But before I do that, I want to go back. I want to, I want to say something very clearly here. Don't check in. Don't follow up. Don't touch base. That's not your emails. That's your, that's your sales rep's built-in mechanism to not sound like they're salesy and pushing. They downloaded something off of your website. They opened the door and said, come in. They're already interested. Stop it. We're just here to validate how interested they are and how much they want to move forward. Do they have actual desire? Are they ready now? Personal, contextual. Stop that touching base and following up and checking in stuff. They downloaded something. Oh, now I'm talking about inbound leads, right? Okay. So I'm going to tell you to think a little differently. And this depends on the lead, and I'm not telling you to do this all the time. So as a manager, I think you got to coach this, and I think you got to oversee this. I don't think you need to. I, I I don't believe you should leave this to your sales rep right away. Okay, lead comes in, inbound lead. It's your ideal prospect or persona, a company that fits that range, the demographics, all the stuff's right. Okay, but the contact is down the power food chain. Let's say they are an administrator. What do you do? I'm not saying every time. I'm saying that sometimes you need to think differently. Let's say you go to an event or a show. Maybe you go to Inbound in Boston, right? <laughs> and there's thousands of people there. And they stop by your booth and you have this list. And all these people that stop by, some of them are not decision makers. The vast majority because decision makers don't go and buy your stuff. They usually send somebody to gather information. 
So why wouldn't you do a little research on the company, find out who the power is, who's your ideal contact in that situation, and reach out to them? Reach out to power. See if you can get a hold of them. Then go to the contact second. You can tell the contact, hey, I, it's, it's interesting that you stopped by our booth or you downloaded this white paper last last or yesterday or today i um i just contacted so and so in your office about this very same thing small world right so you're not trying to hide it from them but you're putting it out there see what happens see what happens when you do that I'm telling you to do that every time you need to pick and choose that see if it works for you you might find you're jump-starting the opportunity. Okay, if you're not having any success with leads, you're doing the multiple touches, you're doing the whole thing, you're not getting anywhere with folks down the food chain, and you're actually getting someplace with people up the food chain, what's the harm in trying it? Right? What's the harm in stepping just slightly above and then saying to them, hey, I did this. Because you're thinking about this on a personal level, and I'm thinking about it on a corporate level. You're selling to a company. I know all sales are personal, and people have to like you and have to develop a relationship. But maybe you're starting at a gatekeeper. And I'm just saying, maybe go around that gatekeeper. And it doesn't have to be blatant. Hey, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking. Hey, that's so weird. I had them on my list to call, and I, I did this. Okay? It's pretty simple. And then go through the process. Make sure they're doing the multiple touches over three to four weeks. Ending it. If it doesn't work, sending it back to marketing for more nurturing. Because most of those people that did that, their companies end up buying something. So you know that because I've said that before. So it always goes back to marketing with feedback. And when you make a connection and you have conversations, that feedback is just as critical. The more feedback you can provide to the, to the marketing folks, the better your leads are going to get. Having those conversations is critical. Okay, let's talk about close, the close. I'm talking about closing the connection. What are you closing them for? Please stop touching base. Again, don't like you doing that. Your goal is to convert that opportunity, that connection, that person, that prospect into the next conversation. So you get them on the phone, your goal is to convert them. You want them to turn into a full-blown prospect. So if you're touching base, following up, checking in, you're not going to be able to close them. Because you don't seem important. They've already given you the entrance, so jump right in. And ask those questions that are more open-ended. Stuff that creates a conversation. Even something as simple as if they came to your event. Hey, who attended the event with you? Okay, what, it, what, what inspired you to download the white paper? This gets, it, gets the conversation going. And then try to then begin your helping. You start helping them. How can I help you? How can I help you solve your problem? They're working hard in marketing to provide you with leads. If you just leave it up to marketing to say, hey, we're giving them leads, it's up to sales. Now, a, now, let me back up a second. Some people are using agencies. Some are using marketing, internal marketing. Here's the problem. There's a disconnect between sales and marketing. We know about that. There's thousands of things you can read about it. I've podcasted and written about it. Okay, alignment and all that good stuff. That's partially where the name of the company came from. Aligning sales and marketing. Okay. So I understand that. But I think what's going on, too, is that marketing firms or agencies that are doing a lot of your marketing, they don't want to get involved on the sales side because it's complex. Most of us in sales on the VP level or the sales management level, we tend to get our, our, our hair up on our back if they even begin to talk about that because they're not really the experts in selling. So they begin to start pushing on us on what to do. And they have some good ideas, but I think at the end, at the end of the day, you need to manage that sales conversation. 
So one of the things I recommend you do is really open up to how am I going to, how am I going to deal with these leads? Don't, this is what happens with sales. We look at a, at a lead as a lead, as a lead, as a lead. Okay. I worked for a company that used to do a lot of television advertising way back when, back in the day, after an ad would run, the phones would ring off the hook. They were leads. Not so much anymore because everything's done on the internet. So don't look at a lead as a lead as a lead. Look at the inbound. Look at all of your leads differently based on whether you're sourcing them. So if you're getting inbound leads, you need to figure out how you're going to how you're going to respond to those and how you're going to make the connection. What your goals are in those connection. How you're going to talk to them, and how you're going to get the conversation to close to the next appointment to do the deeper dive. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to say is I told you to kind of go around the person and go to power. Like I'm saying, not every time you really need to pick and choose that, but I think you might find some success with that, and I would use management oversight on, on doing that. However, I will say this, that if you get an inbound lead and you make a connection and they're not the decision maker, don't despair. This is how it works with inbound. They'll start bringing the people in because that's, what they're, that's their job. That's what they're being tasked to do. You'll eventually get to power if you do your job right. If you get to that next conversation and you begin to probe for those things, that's what will work for you. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. Subscribe and don't forget that free coaching call. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and of course I'm on LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me. Just tell me you're a listener, even if you haven't subscribed. Then I'll just email you and tell you to subscribe. But if you're a listener and you want to connect, feel free. Contact us, jshay at alignment-group.com. Of course, you can go to the website. There's all kinds of goodies on the website, but remember... Email me. I do respond. Faster on the coaching call because you put it on the calendar. My emails tend to pile up from the podcast, but I do respond to all of them. Just want to let you know. Again, thank you for subscribing. And as always, keep filling the funnel.